Hello, my name is Clement Fung, and I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University. Today I'll be discussing some recent work which discusses how machine learning can be combined with prior techniques, specifically taint tracking, to more effectively and more efficiently detect DOMIC success vulnerabilities in the web. This work is done in collaboration with William Melliker, Professor Leo Bauer, and Professor Lee Jia, all of whom are also affiliated with Carnegie Mellon University. Cross-site scripting, or XSS, is the most common and fastest growing type of vulnerability seen in the web today. DOM XSS is a client-side version of cross-site scripting, which does not interact with the server and is therefore more difficult to detect. With these vulnerabilities, attackers can steal information or execute arbitrary code on websites, as seen in high-profile examples at Yahoo, Gmail, and DuckDuckGo. A DOM XSS vulnerability is caused when unsanitized JavaScript allows a user to write input directly to the document object model, or the DOM. Consider this example where a website takes as a parameter the name from the URL bar and writes it directly to the DOM in a welcome message, saying, hello, Bob. A more malicious user could take this same code and instead provide input that directly injects code into the DOM. When this input is written to the DOM, Arbitrary JavaScript is executed, allowing the attacker to steal information or compromise the web server in other ways. DOM XSS is detected in a variety of ways. As a reminder, since DOM XSS is a client-side technique, server-side defenses would be unable to see these attacks and therefore unable to detect or prevent them. It's also possible to define content security policies to filter unwanted content. However, prior work has shown that these rely heavily on user configuration and are often misconfigured, allowing DOM XSS to occur. Another family of solutions involves analyzing the code involved in a website and verifying that it is safe. Static analysis is one such method. However, prior work has also shown that because JavaScript is a highly dynamic language, this makes static analysis difficult. So an alternative would be dynamic analysis or taint tracking in which the information flow of a program is captured while the program is being executed. This is the technique that we build on in our work today. How does taint tracking detect DOM XSS? This is done by bookkeeping, bookkeeping the information flow within a program as it's being executed and propagating taint information from defined sources to sinks. In this function, an input passes through both control logic as well as variable manipulation and addition before ultimately being sent to a sensitive sync function, document.write. When a flow exists between an attacker controlled input and a sensitive sync function, this indicates the potential possibility of a DOM XSS vulnerability. However, a flow may not necessarily be a vulnerability and thus we call it an unconfirmed vulnerability. Tainted flows may actually be sanitized or otherwise inexploitable. In this example, an input does reach a sensitive sync function, but must pass through the parse float function, which ensures that only legal decimal numbers are passed to the function. Prior work has shown that by generating proof of concept exploits, it's possible to test whether or not these DOM XSS tainted flows actually succeed and are true vulnerabilities. We do the same, and if the exploit succeeds, we then label it to be a confirmed vulnerability. While taint tracking is a very helpful tool in detecting DOM XSS, it occurs a high overhead. Prior work and our local experiments show that a 7 to 17% overhead is added to JavaScript benchmarks when instrumenting with taint tracking. In addition, most analyzed paths by taint tracking are actually safe. Less than 0.01% of all analyzed functions turned out to be DOM XSS vulnerabilities. Prior work has also found that DOM XSS vulnerabilities are often syntactically similar. This suggests that techniques such as machine learning could help learn these patterns and eliminate a large proportion of these benign flows that would otherwise be analyzed by taint tracking. In doing so, we answer two questions in our work. Firstly, can machine learning successfully predict DOM XSS vulnerabilities outright? And secondly, the focus in our talk today, can machine learning help alleviate the overhead cost of taint tracking in a combined system? We propose this in the following way. First, a JavaScript function is passed to a machine learning classifier, which makes a prediction as to whether or not this function is safe or not. Ideally, a large proportion of the predicted safe functions are indeed safe, as these functions would no longer be classified by taint tracking. All other functions are passed to taint tracking, 
which then determines whether a tainted flow exists or not. For flows that are tainted, they go through the proof of concept exploit, and whether this exploit succeeds or not confirms the presence of a DOMIC success vulnerability. Our question ultimately is this. Can this approach, which combines machine learning with taint tracking, help detect DOMIC success vulnerabilities as effectively as the original taint tracking solution, but reduce overhead while doing so? To train these machine learning models, a large amount of data is needed. We performed a large scale web crawl of pages contained within the Alexa top 10,000 websites. We use a taint tracking enabled browser to collect the results of taint tracking and proof of concept exploits. 19 billion total functions were analyzed and 32 million unconfirmed DOMIC success vulnerabilities were found and 4.5 million confirmed DOMIC success vulnerabilities were found. Many of these instances are duplicates and when considering distinct functions, the counts are far lower. We additionally process these functions by breaking them down into their syntactic tokens and collecting those tokens in a bag of words representation. A subset of our training and test data set is made publicly available. Our machine learning classifier is structured then as follows. The input JavaScript bag of words is passed through a hash, fun hash function, which converts them into hashes, which is then passed to an embedding layer that converts the hash values into a dense vector. This dense vector then passes through a three layer feed forward deep neural network, which produces a zero to one score, indicating the likelihood that a DOMIC success vulnerability exists. We perform this process twice, first training on the labels with unconfirmed vulnerabilities, the results of taint tracking, for use in our machine learning plus taint tracking pipeline. And secondly, we train another model using the labels with confirmed vulnerabilities to directly predict whether DOMIC success exists. In exploring the optimal configuration for our machine learning setup, we test with a variety of parameters. We test what the ideal representation of code is, whether entire scripts, functions, or semantic distance metric made the most sense. We test with varying embedding size, embedding layer sizes as used for the input to our model, and also various hidden layer sizes in our feed forward network. Ultimately, we chose functions as the ideal representation an embedding layer size of 64, and a first hidden layer size of 100, which subsequently halves for three layers. When evaluating our model, rather than focusing on accuracy, we focus on the precision recall trade-off, as this paints a better story when it comes to the tunability of our system. We evaluate both on all seen functions, as well as unseen functions, which, is, which do not previously appear in the original training data set. The results of our models are as follows. Here is a precision recall trade-off graph. To interpret what this graph means, the top right would indicate a high precision and a high recall. This would be the perfect and ideal solution, but of course is not always possible. The top left is an area where the classifier makes very few errors. It's very precise, but because of this, it captures very few vulnerabilities. The bottom right is an area where the classifier detects most vulnerabilities but in doing so makes more errors and has more false positives. We tune for higher recall since taint tracking is able to correct these false positives in our system. When predicting unconfirmed vulnerabilities, our model is able to, to produce 40% precision at 90% recall. Unfortunately, when predicting confirmed vulnerabilities directly, there are far too many false positives at 90% recall or higher for these models to be used effectively. How do these numbers relate in context of the larger system at hand? Remember that in the original solution, all functions are passed to taint tracking and a very small percentage, only 0.17%, turn out to be unconfirmed vulnerabilities or tainted flows. In our proposed solution, we use a classifier that removes from consideration a large percentage of total functions and passes the rest to taint tracking, which then finds tainted flows to find unconfirmed vulnerabilities. There are two major differences between these two solutions. First of all, far fewer functions are passed to taint tracking when machine learning is used to remove them from consideration. Because taint tracking is an expensive step, this greatly reduces the overhead imposed by our solution. Secondly, because our machine learning classifier is tuned for high recall, we're stay, still able to capture most tainted flows. Only 0.01% of flows were lost when using our machine learning classifier to remove flows from consideration. Next, we see how the ultimate confirmed vulnerability recall translates to the hypothetical savings in our system. 
In this graph, we show the ultimate end-to-end -end confirmed vulnerability recall and the proposed hypothetical overhead savings based on a series of local performance tests. In this graph, it's possible to achieve high overhead savings by passing very few functions to taint tracking. However, this results in too many false negatives and too many vulnerabilities being allowed. It's also possible to capture all vulnerabilities by passing all functions to taint tracking. But due to the overhead imposed by machine learning and taint tracking, this solution is slower than taint tracking alone. The key here is to find a sweet spot. We identified this point where taint tracking is run on 11.1% of all functions, detects 99.8% of confirmed vulnerabilities, and still produces a 2.7x savings in overhead. When taking this solution and analyzing it further, we see that the overhead depends on a variety of factors. Firstly, the hardware used has an effect. We ran this experiment with three pieces of hardware, a commodity laptop, a commodity desktop with additional RAM and processing power, and another desktop equipped with a GPU. Unsurprisingly, as the hardware becomes more powerful, the time spent on inference in machine learning is reduced. This directly relates to a larger proportion in savings when the time spent in machine learning is smaller. The values shown here are still for our 99.8% of confirmed vulnerability recall. It's possible to have even higher hypothetical savings by caching the results such that duplicate functions are never re-executed with machine learning. By doing so, it's possible to capture 94.5% of unique vulnerabilities while attaining a hypothetical overhead savings of up to 3.43x. Another way to interpret our savings is when considering large code bases. For our collected test data set, if we analyzed all functions with chain tracking, this would take 5.8 days in total. However, using our proposed machine learning and taint tracking system, running taint tracking on the entire solution and capturing 99.8% of vulnerabilities would take now less than one day. There's one final observation we'd like to share from our study. We had initial experiments that used linear classifiers and saw how useful they could be in detecting DOM XSS. From these experiments, we found that linear model performance was poor. Less than 1% precision was seen at 90% recall or higher for both confirmed and unconfirmed vulnerabilities. However, a benefit of our linear models is that they produce weights which directly correlate the presence of a token to its likelihood of DOM XSS. We analyzed our five classification cross-validation linear classifiers and found the top 10 tokens observed in these classifiers. For these tokens, the absolute value does not matter so much but the total relative importance does. There are two findings we'd like to share. Firstly, write and eval were the most common tokens seen by far. This is unsurprising as they directly relate to sensitive DOM writing sync functions. Secondly, we saw that some long, uncommon HTML strings being used as JavaScript constants were also in our top 10 most important tokens. This is a bit surprising, but after searching for these tokens on GitHub, we found that they occurred in popular scripts that were frequently copied and forked into other repositories. This suggests yet another reason why DOM XSS is becoming more and more prevalent. Developers may be importing scripts in libraries without fully understanding the security implications of doing so. In conclusion, our takeaways are as follows. DOM XSS vulnerabilities can be detected with a combination of taint tracking and proof of concept exploits. But currently these solutions are too expensive to be used in runtime settings or large-scale use cases. By adding machine learning to these solutions, we're able to reduce the overhead of taint tracking by up to 2.7x and achieve 99.8% recall while still doing so. Additionally, detecting DOM XSS directly with machine learning is still a challenge and is left for future work. My contact information can be seen here. Our training and test bag of words datasets can be found at the following link and the code used to parse our data sets and train our machine learning models is also provided. Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you at the Q&A.